Uh, Dr. Drew, we're, we're learning sort of what led up even to the hours before he died, uh, learning from the Star Tribune, a source telling them that uh, they heard from a paramedic who was here responding to the scene, one of the first responders, who had said that when his body was found, he was likely dead for at least six hours before someone discovered him slumped in his elevator. Also, another interesting detail that the day before he died, that he was actually in the hospital getting intravenous fluids. We don't know what it's for. We have not been told exactly why, because obviously there are rules governing that. But uh, it is an interesting tidbit that he actually was in a hospital the day before he actually, uh, you know, left this earth. So a lot of people wondering why he didn't may maybe stay there. What was going on that led him to have to get those fluids? Um, and then that he was a bit agitated uh, over the days. You remember when his plane made an emergency landing. Actually, after he abruptly left the hospital and came back home, some of the people around him telling the Star Tribune that he was feeling more and more and more agitated. And that is what prompted someone in his team to call someone in New York who had been working with Prince and say, hey, we need some help here. So very interesting few details. It gives a little bit better of a picture of what was going on up until the day he died. Thanks, Sarah. Let, let me put a little finer point on this. It, to say that, you know, the fact that he got IV fluids when he went to the hospital means exactly nothing. Because if you go into an emergency room, most of the time they're going to want access to your system and they're going to do that by setting up an IV. So just a person who looks ill shows up at the ER, they're going to get an IV. So it's not, it's not as though that implies anything specific. And I will tell you, though, the increasing agitation, though, does imply escalating drug withdrawal it makes me wonder sarah if he got some prescriptions at the hospital that's what we should be looking at what he received from that hospital visit yeah, and, and look, we had talked to his publicist in the days before who said, hey, he was suffering from flu. He could have been going there to get, you know, hydrated. We know no, that he, no, he visited no, the I'm, hospital I'm, before I'm in, um, with dehydration I, issues. Yeah. We, no, we, no. I know stop. that, but we don't here's know, the deal. Anytime I think we need Sarah, to be clear Sarah, that we really don't know. But, but Sarah, know. here's what I know. Anytime a publicist says dehydration, don't listen to it because adult, uh, otherwise healthy young males don't get dehydration, number one. And number two, he didn't have the flu. Flu doesn't come and go. He did, but drug withdrawal feels like the flu. So I'm saying this is all likely to be drug withdrawal. Let me go to Dr. Carter. Dr. Carter, let's discuss why the paramedic. A paramedic shows up and says, this guy's been down at least six hours. To me, I hear this body was in rigor mortis. The body could have been in rigor mortis, or they could have detailed uh, liver mortis, where the blood has pulled, being in one position for over six hours. So it could be both of those, and the body temperature. Explain to people what those two things are. Rigor mortis is the body stiffening due to lactic acid buildup. That occurs usually between six to 12 hours, begins to form in a head to tail direction. Liver mortis is pulling of the blood from gravity if the body's in one position for at least six hours. And you'll see that in the skin and soft tissue, correct? Correct. You'll see a purplish to pink coloration. So if somebody, we keep hearing about him slumped in the shower, so we're talking about down in the lower part of his buttock or hip area, some accumulation of fluids and the rigor mortis, which is the stiffness. 